Well, the Labour Party's assured us that they are doing proper, robust checks. And, of course, that needs to happen because we want as many people as possible involved in the leadership election uh, and choosing our next leader. And, you know, I want to be this to be our next Labour Prime Minister as well. So it's an important choice. Uh, and so I think, you know, is they've got to do those robust checks because, of course, you want everybody that's involved to believe in the values of the Labour Party, you so know, not, not to be coming, having campaigned for other parties. What do you fear is happening then? Because, I mean, Jeremy Corbyn is... is is the front runner, like sure. nine to two. I mean, a big, big, big front runner. Do you feel that there's a scale of abuse and sort of corruption that would put him so far out there? Well, I've not seen evidence of that. Right. And I think it's, in the end, this is going to be for the party to do those checks, not for the individual campaigns. Uh -huh. And, you know, I'm getting on with, you know, campaigning across the country mm. um, for people's votes. And, and I think there's a lot of people who have been still undecided and, you know, are getting a lot of strong support. We had over a thousand people come to meetings at the weekend uh, in support as well. You so. say that, though, but the bookies have sort of, you know, say it's a done deal that they've said that he is the clear winner. How is it that he is so far ahead? And and we all got the poll so badly wrong before the general election. So I'd have a bit of caution about that because that's not the response that, that we're so getting. But I do think, well, I do, no, I do, there's no doubt about it that obviously Jeremy's picked up a, a lot of support. And I think that's partly a lot of people are wanting, are so frustrated with us having lost the election and looking for, for change or, or, you know, for, to change things. I suppose my message is I want us to change the country, not just change the party, because if all that happens is we have change in the Labour Party but we can't win an election, then we won't change anything. And I think we'll then let a lot of people down. There's a lot of people depending on a Labour government who are you know, now seeing... That we can't cut tuition fees because Labour didn't get elected. We can't do all the support it, for families because they didn't, didn't get elected. elected. It, was, it was already too left wing. And yet, strangely enough, it seems that members of the Labour Party or supporters of the Labour Party are taking it, potentially taking it more left wing. Well, I think we were too narrow at the election. And I think if you try and move a narrow party to the left, that won't work. If you try and move a narrow party to the right, that won't work. The truth is we've got to reach out. I want everybody who believes in both a stronger economy and also a fairer Britain, you know, where nobody's left behind, where we're not fragmented and divided, to feel like Labour's their home. I think we can be true to our values and also be strong enough to take on the Conservatives and the damage that they are doing to Britain. But you could see this as a, as a backlash from people as to, you know, what was going on before and, and a clear message that they didn't like it. Do you, how concerned are you about the future direction of the party? Well, I think it's really important that the party is, is standing up for people across Britain, but you know, we can't do that by just shouting from the sidelines. You know, we've got to be able to get a Labour government in place. It's not enough, I think, to be angry at the world. We've got to change the world. I, I mean, I've been talking about things like I want more universal free childcare because I think families get stretched and strained mm. and, you know, to fit round work. That's not on. It's not fair. I think we can fund I found where areas where you could fund it in order to do that. That would be a radical change for the future, be great for women's equality, great for parents. So I think there's a lot of things we in the Labour Party can be campaigning for that don't mean just like going back to the 1980s or, you know, staying on the sidelines. Mm. It must be personally very frustrating for you and, and possibly, I think, very sad for you in a way because you came in in 1997, new Labour, new MP, you and your husband Ed Balls, big part of that whole new Labour movement. And I think we all felt, whatever political colour might be, rather personally sorry for him when you saw his face when he lost on election night. And he's already out of politics. Do you feel in a way that you're almost fighting on a very personal level for your family's still involvement in politics, really? Well, to be honest, it actually feels more like I'm fam fighting for, for families across the country because I had constituents, my constituency, and families who, and one woman who she's, you know, she's mm. paying the bedroom tax and she's got a lot of arrears and she was relying on the Labour government to mm. get in and to abolish the bedroom tax because she can't move to a smaller home, there aren't any nearby, you know, she's, and, and there were, those were the things that the Labour Party wanted to do. There's a lot mm. of things we wanted to do to get more chances for young people to so get on. Be and, sad, so, then, exactly, that so that's the frustration that. that we can't. You know, there's something so frustrating about opposition because you are so powerless mm. to change anything and to help people. And I, I think that's my, my message to the Labour Party is we have got to be able to use the anger and the passion that we have about a fairer Britain to change things, to get into Parliament and to change things and not just... If we stand on the sidelines, we let people down, Would I think. Would you stay, though, if you didn't win this? Because Andy Burnham has said that there is some common ground between them. He's kind of already setting out 
that's all it would appear. Would you say or would you think this is not the party that I know? And both of you, you know, has been going I'm not politics. leaving the Labour Party now. I've joined the Labour Party over a quarter of a century ago. So I think it's just would feel you so leave, passionate though, about the Labour Party. And come out of Westminster. No, I think I think you can't take your bat and ball home. It's, you've got to be part of uh, the party that you know that I just believe is, is mm. its whole purpose is to help people across Britain. So could you work with Jeremy Corbyn then? I think I think there's a bit lot of differences between Jeremy and I, and I wouldn't want to be in a party arguing, for example, for pulling out of Europe or for printing money because I think some of his so stay you know, in the proposals, party, but not in a yeah, shadow no, cabinet. Yeah, it's an argue, you know, argue for the things I believe in, which is we should be an alternative to George Osborne's calling for forty percent cuts to our public services. Now that goes way beyond anything you need to do to bring the deficit down or anything that's responsible. It's not about good economics. It's an ideology that is hitting our public services. I want to stand up against that, but I don't want to do that in the way that I think Jeremy or others would do by just printing money or doing something that's not going to work. I want to do it in a way that is credible and also fair yeah. and strong and radical for the future. Are you aware that no matter who wins this, the party is, looks like it's imploded? Well, the party certainly stands at a crossroads today. It does. This is a big moment for the Labour Party, a big decision in terms of which way do we go, do we go from here. Mm.